Hello, my friend. I'm glad to see you made it, for we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. He lives. Here recently, as you may have noticed, and all some of my videos have been taken down by YouTube. And YouTube says I can no longer make videos, or for five days I've been shut down because they're absolutely terrified of the words I preach. Because I preach the truth, and the truth is the power is in the people. We, the people of God, I'm not saying we the people of the United States of America, I'm saying we, the people of God, own the power. And that terrifies them. I said in my last video that was taken down by YouTube that their desire is for us to believe a lie, and if we don't believe the lie, then we shall die. And evidence of that very statement being the truth is them taking me out. Them spiritually murdering me. Them killing me. Which made every word I said about them honest and true. And there's nothing I can do. Because we're living in a world, and I'm speaking not to the believers of Jesus Christ, but I'm speaking to you, Mr. Fag, who lives behind the scenes, declaring to us what is acceptable and not acceptable. To you, Mr. YouTube, whoever you are as you sat in darkness and sat in secret, being paid billions of dollars by wicked, evil people. The ones who say to us, the people of God, that evil is good. I could post any murder I want on YouTube and, and it's acceptable. Murder is acceptable. This is what they allow. I, I could dress up my six-year-old, eight-year-old, ten-year-old baby little girl as a sex symbol. And that's acceptable. I, I could preach profanity and F-bombs and all kinds of foul language. That is acceptable. But when I come preaching in the name of Jesus, telling the people of God that the true power of the world, what makes the world tick, what makes the world go, is the righteousness that lives within you, is no longer acceptable. When I preach, repent from murder. When I repeat, preach, repent from foul behavior. That's not acceptable. And the word repent means turn away from. To turn away from wickedness, to turn away from violence, to turn away from murder. <coughs> that is absolutely unacceptable. We're at a place where evil is being called good, and anyone who does good is rewarded with evil. But good, being good, being righteous, being honest, is, is no longer good. The world is going insane. And I haven't met a person in reality, 
I haven't met a person online who's buying in to the crap they're selling. It, it is a image of propaganda created by a group of liars. And they want us who are not insane to buy that image, to worship that image, to hold up that image in such a high esteem, we give it power and life. But there's only one power that commands over me. And that is the commandment of Jesus Christ. That's the commandment of God. Even if I'm the last and only person on earth who is not disgusting, who does what is right, I will continue to follow the commands of Jesus Christ because the world has no power over me. Only the commandment of God has power over me. And the commandment of God is that we are to love one another in the same way our God loves us. We are not lambs being led to the slaughter. We are conquerors. We are not victims of anything. We are warriors. We don't come in the power of an army, a police force, guns, armor, or things made for human battle. Instead, we come in the name of God. And I think that's the one thing that most people fear about me. If, if you didn't fear me, you would take the time to listen to me. But because you are afraid of what I have to say, you will not listen to me. That's why I have no views. I got 10 people watching and they are so afraid of, of my word reaching out to the masses, they do everything they can to prevent it from being heard. Because I come in the name of the Lord. I did not come in the name of my own might or power. I did not wake up one day and say, oh, today I'm going to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I never made the decision. Rather, it was Jesus Christ who came to me and said, you are going to preach my gospel. One day you're going to tell the world Jesus Christ is coming, the whole world. Many Christians across the world are waiting to be raptured, waiting to escape, waiting to be taken away. While I sit here waiting for our Lord's return, for him to return into this world and establish his own kingdom. And that's what's got them afraid. Because when Jesus Christ returns, the Antichrist and its cohorts will perish. They will vanish at the sound of one word. Now I've been made a witness, not a Jehovah witness as that false religion, but a witness by God. And this is what I've witnessed since my birth until today. I have witnessed violence. I have witnessed abuse. I have witnessed sexual immorality. I have witnessed adultery. I've witnessed lying, I've witnessed thievery, 
I've witnessed strife. I've witnessed envy. I've witnessed jealousy. I've witnessed everything written under the sun that defines evil. I've seen it and I know it exists. But what I have not witnessed is the love of God that people proclaim they have, they know of, outside of their own lips. As the Lord says, your lips are near to me. You speak the word of God, but your heart is far from me. It's dark and it's poisoned. It's wicked and it's evil. And that's what I've witnessed. I've witnessed many people say to me, oh, I, I love you and I care for you. And then that's as far as it goes because it's pure lip service. There's no action behind those words. It's only words. Absent of the action that defines the words. And that's what I've witnessed. Now I'm going to be trying. I have some little good news. I, I was talking to a man the other day and he says that I could use 20 acres of his land to raise some cattle. Because in this town there, there's no work and nobody will work you. Right? We, we got a guy who supposed to trim the trees and get the trees off the roof because every time a windstorm comes, the tree branches that are hanging on the roof continue to dig holes in the roof. Okay, we talked to him in July, and it's now the end of August. And why won't he help us? You're from Denver. You're not from here go down and talk to a guy about restoring a seat for me because I need a seat in our old, beautiful, cool truck that I named Scooter <laughs> to use as a source of income. Wouldn't even call us back. Says, yeah, I want the job. I'll do the job. By the way, where are you from? Denver. But we live here. We moved to here. We're from here, nah, never mind. I'm not gonna help you. Don't even call you back. There's nowhere on earth where evil doesn't exist. Nowhere. So we gotta take it upon ourselves to do what God has called us to do. See, I, I live in a church, and me and my family, we own this church. And we're going to open it one day back to the public. But I'm not going to be the preacher who browbeats and breaks down old ladies, widows, and the poor <clears throat> into believing that your faith is displayed or proven true by the amount of money you put in my hand. I will never have a sermon about tithing. Never. See, this is a place to worship Jesus Christ. This is a place for unbelievers to come and find the truth. This is a place for people to come and be he helped and healed. But this is not a place to peddle Jesus for money. And if we're going to 
live our lives as though we were kings. Kings. We're, we're going to be <coughs> actively working to establish the kingdom. I mean, why should we go to Walmart? Why should we go to their stores? The day is coming when the believers and the God, people of God will not be able to shop at stores. I know there's many people say that, well, my, me and my Christian friends, you're not a Christian because you said you're a Christian. You're not a Christian because you went to a Christian church. You're a Christian when you obey God's commands, period. God says, I do not desire sacrifice. Rather, I desire your obedience to my commands. And nobody's willing to obey. We're waiting to be raptured. But God says, no, I will not. Instead, I'm going to come here and establish my kingdom. I guess everybody forgot that part. Jesus is coming. It says all through the Bible, even in the book of Revelation, the very last sentence. Yes, I, the Lord, am coming soon that's right there says to me and to everyone who believes in a pre-tribulation post-tribulation mid-tribulation rapture that your teachings and the things you're believing in are false because christ is coming to establish his kingdom. What you're really saying is, I don't want to be held accountable for my own actions. And yet, in the Bible, it says, I will prepay each one of you as according to what you have done to each other. Right there in the book of Revelations, Paul says it. James says Faith without deeds is dead. It's worthless and void of the truth. John, in the epistles of John say, faith without deeds is void of truth. It's dead and not of God. For if you see a person standing in front of you and you withhold good, you withhold compassion, you withhold the goodness of God from them, then you're a liar when you say you know God. And we know the liar is Satan, and those who practice lies are of the devil. They're not of God. God came to rescue us from the hand of Satan the devil and his seed. Not everybody is walking in the light, but many and most, especially in our world, as the hearts of all grow colder and colder daily. Not of God, still walking in darkness. And so long as we walk in darkness, whoever we are, we are not Saved. Not saved. And so why do they take down my videos? Why do they attack me? I have a desire to save you. Not the believers who are already saved, but those who walk in darkness. By preaching the truth that I have the right to believe in whatever I want to believe in. And even if you kill my body, you're not going to take away my faith 
and what I believe is the truth. And you can't force me to believe in any of your lies, no matter how deep or how high the propaganda goes. I never believe in the acts of violence. I'll never believe in the acts of murder. Never allow my children to be used as sex symbols. So if we're going to establish the kingdom of God, we got to start obeying the commandments of God. Because the kingdom of God is being established on on the backs of those who are faithful to God's commands. As Christ said, I fully obeyed my Father's commands and I'm asking you to fully obey my commands. And in obeying the commandments of God, giving them reverence, it gives us power, power to overcome the world. Who is going to overcome this world? He who believes in Jesus Christ. He who believes that Jesus Christ was sent by God. Jesus says, stand up for righteousness and righteousness sake, because the righteous shall see God. Be a peacemaker, because the peacemakers will see God. Make peace with God. Make peace with God. So I'm wanting to get the cattle going. I got some land to use. Want to get some cattle out there. I'll take you out there, I'll show you some videos. And it probably won't happen until next spring because I'm not quite prepared yet. Still got to do some studying. Never owned cows, never raised cows. But I'm tired of going to stores owned by the communist government. I'm tired of shopping and enriching communist people. China, Russia, North Korea, and those alike. I'm tired of it. I'm not willing or wanting or desiring to support them. Why should we, the people of God, go outside of the kingdom of Christ to find food? To find clothing, to find security. Why should we? To find work. I mean, let's be a people who all agree that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. He is the King of Israel. Let's let's come in together and bring our gifts together, whether they're spiritual gifts or physical gifts, for the greater good and the establishment of Christ's kingdom in this world, who is the head of the church, the head of the body, the head of the man. The people in the first century in the original 12 apostles day brought their goods together, both spiritual gifts and physical gifts for the greater need of all those who had need. They didn't come with a hand begging for money. They didn't come with the stick beating down old ladies and widows and poor people into believing that their faith was no good 
unless they gave the whole 10%. Instead, they became the builders of a new way, a new way of life, absent of the Roman Empire. We're not going to go shopping at Roman stores anymore. We're not going to buy Roman goods anymore. There's coming a day when we won't be able to go to the hospitals. We won't be able to go to the stores. We will not have access to medicine, food, or clothing. That day is coming. So why don't we prepare ourselves? And I'm not talking about false preparation of buying EMT foods that, you know, last for 10 years and, and stockpiling a bunch of food for ourselves, hiding it in the cellar in case something goes down. I'm talking about being an active piece of the solution. The solution that we are governed through the commandments of God. We are governed by God himself. We are going to be a new nation. One where the keys of the government of that nation rest upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ. By obeying his commands. By having a sincere love for one another, which comes from the heart, not from the lips. Instead of saying I love you, let me prove I love you by actively being your friend. And a friend is there for you when you're in distress. A friend is there for you, there for you, there for you when you need them, when you need their help. Having a sincere love for one another. It's not lip service. We're not to love each other with words and mouth but with deeds and truth. Let us be a part of the establishing of a kingdom. A kingdom. Not a group of beggars who are begging old ladies, widows, and poor people for money. Instead, let's be a part of establishing a kingdom that has value, that is viable, that is actively working with the commandments of God alive within their hearts. I gotta go and sell those cattle and raise some cattle so we can have food at an affordable price. So we can have access to the things we need. I want to get my truck going and offer a service of picking up trash and junk from people's homes, which in this town probably won't work because they won't support anyone from outside of this town. They're dirty, disgusting, people still walking in darkness. But I believe God can and will lead us together and gather us together by the power of his good name, by the power of his own spirit. We gotta die to self. We gotta die to sin. That's the thing, back in 2012, this guy named David died. 
died and then rose back to life as a new creation. Christ alive in me. Jesus Christ alive in me. And what's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Me coming to you through the anointment of God and then you rejecting that anointment. You rejecting God's truth. Say, I come to you in the name of my Father. I come to you in the name of God, as a witness of God. And, and to reject that, you are rejecting Jesus Christ, the one who sent me. The reason my name is David is because God chose David to be his witness and the commanders to the people. The people I don't even know come running to me, come listening to me. And I make these videos for a people yet born so they may hear the truth and they may understand that the establishment of Jesus Christ isn't going to happen absent of your willingness to obey his commands. His commands. Love one another with a sincere heart, with a desire for Christ. A desire for Christ. Establishing farms gardens and a workforce all working together to establish the kingdom of Christ. A righteous kingdom full of justice, honesty, truth. Righteousness. Meekness. A willing desire to be a peacemaker. Peacemaker with God. When was the last time you read Isaiah 45, 46, and 47? Isaiah. God speaking to the people who are idol makers. Make for themselves a carven image of God. We see in the book of Revelation, the beast, his image, those who carve the image and then give that image life. I mean, think about all the worship we've given to the computer and our cell phones, creating a, an image made from the devices of our own works. See, that's the thing nobody wants to, to admit, that the mark of the beast is the wickedness within your own heart. For the heart is the most deceiving thing in the world. The heart of a man is disgusting and full of deception. And AI is a culmination of the heart of man. It has absolutely no intelligence or power or ability to think for itself or make decisions for itself. All that's coming from the heart of men who have been collectively gathered together into one place to display its own wickedness. We could separate from it, completely disconnect ourselves from the board, leaving it and rendering it absolutely powerless, without voice, without word. 
Without you, it has no voice. Yet we give it voice. Without you plugging it in, it is powerless. And, and then many people want the internet, their computer, to be their savior. Well, let it save you from death. Let it save you from your problems. Allow it to deliver you out of darkness. Because that's what God is doing in our world today by saying, by staying silent. You have put your faith in a false image. You have put your faith in a false God. But you reject the true God. Let your fake God that doesn't exist deliver you on the day of trouble. See how that works for you. How many Christians living in adultery, spiritual adultery? I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior, but I check the horoscope every day. I'm a stargazer. Let your horoscope save you. That's the thing nobody wants to deal with is sin. Sin. Nobody wants to separate themselves from sin. And sin, in its essence, is the despising of your neighbor. Because if the law is resting upon or hangs upon, love each other in the same way you wish to be loved, and the opposite of loving another person is the despising of them. That's sin. If Jesus says, <coughs> love others in the same way I have loved you, and you don't do that, that's sin. If God says, love me with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your spirit and soul, and you don't do that, that's sin. And God is not an image that can be seen. Hey, nobody has seen God. But if we obey God's commands, then we know God is in us and we are in him. And God therefore can be seen. This is why Nobody can see the kingdom of heaven being established in our world. You don't believe God. Somebody will come in their own name, under their own power, through their own might, and you'll believe them. you believe every word they say, even if every word they say is an utterly, utter lie. you believe it. But when somebody comes in the name of God, you won't believe a word they say. Won't believe Jesus. As Jesus assured me, reminded me, that everyone who receives me receives the one who sent me. Everyone who receives me receives 
Jesus Christ. And everyone who receives Jesus Christ receives God our Father. And that's why the kingdom of Christ is not being established yet within our world. Nobody believes it as reality, as fact. Instead, they believe it is nothing more than a, a good story filled with lots of words. They don't believe in the living word of God. Living word of God. Because if we believed in the living word of God, we would use the example Christ gave us to live out our lives. is the living example that we are to follow, right? Okay, we don't talk about Jesus being a publican. We don't talk about Jesus being uh, a king or, or a ruler. We don't talk about Jesus' job. What we talk about the way Jesus lived his life, absent of all those things. He was a poor man who wore rags for clothing, had no home, had no money. And yet he's the most influential person the world has ever seen. What made him so powerful? His army? His willingness to obey God's commands is what made him so powerful. His willingness not to speak words, but to live the word as commanded. He didn't say, I love you. He showed you his love. And this is the love he showed us. While we were sinning, he died for us. Because there is no greater form, there's no higher level of love than this. A friend lays down his life for his friends. And Jesus did it first. And there's no greater form of love than to be willing to lay down your lives. And, and John says the same thing. Paul says the same thing. Peter, James, and all the Gospels say the same thing. This is love. We ought to be willing to lay down our lives for the well-being of of our friends, our brothers, and our sisters. I remember back in 2012, laying down my life for you, laying down my life for the well-being of this church, and soon, the people who will be coming to this church. Now, I felt so betrayed that YouTube took down my videos, called me a liar and a preacher of misinformation, when every word I spoke was the truth. 
felt betrayed. And it's not about hurting my pride. It didn't hurt my pride. What it made was a reality I'm not so willing to look upon. If you don't turn from your wickedness, you're going to hell. And there's no escape from it. And that makes me weep for two days. God says, I take no pleasure in anyone who withdraws from me or pulls away from me, tries to reject me. See, the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit is trying to convince others God is a destroyer. Sin is the destroyer. Lies are the destroyer. Satan is the destroyer. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God is a savior, a deliverer, a redeemer. God's desire is not to destroy the world, but to establish his kingdom in the world. That's what the book of Revelation says. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. That's what they all say. I'm going to establish my kingdom in the world. Where's it at? Why can't I see it? Because you don't believe in God. You'll never see it. And you'll never see it be established because the kingdom of heaven comes from within. From within us comes evil thoughts and, and wicked words. And, and it blares out from our mouth because that's the truth within our heart. That's why YouTube allows murderous videos. They allow women to be raped and then displayed for everyone to see. But that's also why they don't allow the truth and Jesus Christ. Yeah, they allow Christian videos of people begging for money, false Christians. But those who preach turn from sin and live those guys, those guys, they don't want nothing to do with because it's those guys who are seeking to establish a nation within a nation, a country within a country, one that is governed by God and not of men. So let's work together. So I don't believe it was by chance you're watching this video today. Instead, I believe it is the will of God that drew you in, that gathered us together because I'm the guy who believes where two or more have gathered within his name, then surely he is present there I am, says the Lord, right there. And because I believe it, I gave up everything to be a part of it. Financial security, friends, honor, glory, pride, I gave up everything to be a part of that, the gathering of Jesus Christ. 
that separates us, that sets us apart from the rest. From the rest. So if you have any thing to talk about when it comes to farming or gardening, I want to grow a beautiful big garden. I want the church and the churchyard out back there to be a, a giant garden filled with fruit trees and, and food and chickens and, and ducks and, and all the things that we use and need to be a part of God's Eden. A part of the restoration of God's kingdom. could work together on this. That's why we need beef. So we have something sustainable to eat. And we can use all these things for the foundation of God's kingdom that is going to be established in this world. Going to be established in this world. And you can be a part of that. I'm welcoming you in to be a part of it by sharing your gifts, whether spiritual or physical, so we can tend to the needs of the people standing in front of us. I'm not worried about tending to the needs of the people in Africa or India or in Asia right now. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is in those places and preaching the same message and they will establish the kingdom of God within their community through the power of God that comes through our obedience to his command. What God has enriched me or endowed me with the power to do is tend to the needs of those who are standing in front of me. In front, well, it's looking a little empty today. Soon. This church will be open to the public. Maybe you, maybe you will be our first guest. I don't know. Faith moves mountains. Faith moves mountains. Faith in God's commands is being obedient. And it's the obedience. Mountain moves because faith said, uproot yourself and plant yourself into the sea. Faith moves mountains. The faithfulness of Jesus Christ being faithful to his commands creates an obedience. And the obedience transforms the world. Do not be conformed by the world, but transformed by it.